Have you ever wondered what it's like to retire from Albuquerque, New Mexico? And today we'll find out. Our special guest, Pam Myers, tell you a little bit about Pam. Pam, Pam Myers is a storyteller, dynamic leader, and advocate dedicated to fostering prosperity within the LGBTQIA community through business innovation and social advocacy. There's so many letters in LGBTQIA. <laughs> it's hard to get it out. Right. With a multifaceted background, Pam has become a trailblazer in various fields, leaving an indelible mark on New Mexico's LGBTQIA and business communities. As CEO of Go Social, Pam Meyer Social Media, Pam is at the forefront of digital marketing and podcasting solutions for business owners and organizations. Her visionary approach has empowered countless ventures to harness the potential of social media, unlocking new avenues for growth and engagement, and is a driving force behind her client's success, leveraging the power of connectivity to elevate their brand through digital marketing and podcasting. Pam is also the, the managing director of Two Flower Productions, a podcasting company that produces lip service, the podcast of our coming out stories, which I was graciously on recently. <laughs> um, and 3Q, New Mexico's business podcast. Previously, the executive director of the New Mexico Out Business Alliance, currently board advisor of the Way Out West Film Fest, board advisor for the Albuquerque Community Foundation Pride Circle, supporting the LGBTQIA community through philanthropy. Wow. Whew. That's a mouthful. <laughs> Just Pam, you, you do a lot. So welcome. Welcome to the podcast. Thank, Thank you so much for joining. Thank you, Mark. I try and do my part. <laughs> yeah, you sure do. Boy, that's to say the least. So Pam, uh, I'm going to tell a little bit about New Mexico, um, New Mexico and uh, Albuquerque, in fact. So Albuquerque is New Mexico's largest city, sits in the high desert. Its modern downtown core contrasts with Old Town Albuquerque, dating to the city's 1706 founding as a Spanish colony. Old Town is filled with historic adobe buildings such as San Felipe, the Neary Church, five museums and shops selling Native American handicrafts. Nearby, the Indian Pueblo Cultural Center traces the area's tribal history. Okay, Pam, you're up. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. yeah, so tell our audience um, where you moved from, where you originally from, um, or are you a native of New Mexico? And why did you decide to live in, in nearby Albuquerque? Yeah. Oh, well, and, uh, so I was born and raised in Connecticut and Massachusetts, um, but moved to the Dallas Fort Worth area um, in my 20s and then finally made it to New Mexico after vacationing in Santa Fe for years and years. Um, always wanted to be here and it just kind of worked out on on timing. A funny, so I'll share a funny story. Um, I had brought my wife out to visit because when we started dating, I said, you have to know my plan is to live in Santa Fe within seven years. Right. Gotcha. And, and then uh, we, I brought her out to visit. She thought Santa Fe was too small um, and said, well, what about Albuquerque? And I said, well, okay, we could maybe consider Albuquerque. We'll take a look at it. And so we, came out, found a house that we loved, um, went back. We, we lived in a little historical town called McKinney, Texas. It's a suburb of Dallas, right? And mm -hmm. put a for sale by owner sign up in the middle of a blizzard and the house sold that afternoon. Wow. <laughs> and, wow. Uh, and she found a job. And so it just kind of went boom, boom, boom. Within a month, we were, we were here. Wow. Everything just fell into place. Everything fell into place. Yes. And we actually live in Placidas, which is a little rural town 
in between Santa Fe and Albuquerque. It's 18 miles out of Albuquerque and 35 miles out of Santa Fe. Do you have horses? We do not. No. We have, we have <laughs> but people do, dogs. right? People do. Oh, there's lots. And uh, Placidus is known for its wild horses. We have a population of, I think, something like 168 head um, in different herds that roam all around. Some people don't like them, and most of us love being able to see them. So, Wow, that's what you see in the movies. Yes, it's really a gift. I mean, they're just so beautiful and they'll come right up to you and, you know, it's just great to see them. Cool. So you're living in Albuquerque. When did you move to Albuquerque? In December of 2013. 2013. So yes, you've been there a while. 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us, where is Albuquerque and Placidas located um, within New Mexico? It's in the northern part. Um, so, and, and Albuquerque happens to be the third oldest city, with Santa Fe being the oldest, Las Cruces the second, and then Albuquerque is the third. Uh, Albuquerque is literally the an hour, an hour's drive, about a good fifty minute drive from Santa Fe. It's in the northern right. part of New Mexico, five thousand uh, two hundred feet for the most part. It depends where you are within the tent, within the city or the surrounding areas. Um, and um, it's got a great culture. I mean, Albuquerque sometimes has had a bad rap for, you know, a lot of high crime. Crime. The city doesn't. Um, uh, low income. But they're turning it around. I mean, they're really turning it around. We've got big, the movie industry is booming here. And... Um, big companies have now moved in. We have NBC Universal, um, Facebook. Um, hmm. So there's all kinds of growth happening. Didn't Breaking Bad start there? Breaking Bad did, was filmed all around. Yep. 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 They're, and actually, they're filming, they film all around. They're filming a movie just down the road from us right now. They've had wow. a tent out for weeks. Wow. Yeah. I'll have to come out and. Get in the camera. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, Pam, tell us about the climate. What's the climate like in Albuquerque? You know what? I think the climate is great, actually. Um, it's It really doesn't get too hot um, We or too cold. I mean, dep again, depending on where you are. But Albuquerque itself, the winters are very, very mild. You go up to Santa Fe, which is it's right cold. an hour north, and they are 10 degrees, 10 to 12 degrees colder than we are in Albuquerque. Um, in Placidas, we're five degrees colder, five to 10 colder than Albuquerque okay. itself. So it really depends on where you are within the mountain range, right? Right. Um, but... I mean, we'll get down in the winters. I mean, we'll get certainly into the teens, but it might be for a week or two. Um, and you could, then it'll still get beautiful afternoons where, you know, it might get up into the high 40s in the middle of winter, but the sun's shining. So with the elevation, it feels so differently. It could feel beautiful. So it's dry, right? It's, it's very dry. Generally yes, very, a dry climate, desert. Yep. High desert. Very not. It's it's cooler than where you are in Phoenix. Um, Anything we is. We don't get that. <laughs> we don't get those hot temperatures. And in the summertime, even though we may hit, I mean, we may get a couple weeks of high 90s. Um, it could even hit a hundred, although that doesn't happen a lot. But it'll That's go good. down into the sixties at night. That's so nice. it, it really cools off at night, which is yes, that is nice. Do you get monsoons and monsoon season in the summers? I do. Used to be more than How about dust storms? Me every now and then. Yeah. I mean, we had one this year. Um Actually, one last year. It's the only one I've ever seen in 10 years. So okay. not huge. I can, I can take that. Yeah, right. 
Yeah. Do you get a lot of them in in the Phoenix area? Do you get dust storms? I know they- We do. We do at least, I think this past summer we we had one, Um, but some of them are so intense that you don't want to be out, you know, because you don't want to be breathing that in. Yeah. Yeah. So, and yeah, when I first moved there, I was like, I was leaving work one day and I was walking because I took the commuter rail and I was walking to the rail starting to, I was about a block away from work. And then I saw, I mean, the wind was blowing and I was like, I didn't know what was going on. And all of a sudden I I look up and I'm like, oh my God, what is that? (laughs) And it was this big mound of dust coming my way. I ran back to my building just to take cover and then 10 minutes later i mean it was terrible then but within 10 minutes it was gone so, wow oh yeah i mean yeah my sinus is just kind of going <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right you don't want to be breathing that stuff in no. that's how people get valley fever yeah yeah. <clears throat> yeah we don't we don't i mean we get high winds here but not dust storms per se I mean, That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. So does Albuquerque have a large retirement community? Would you say? Um, You know, I looked that up and I couldn't find any firm statistics on it. Um, I wouldn't say it's known for a retirement as a retirement community. Um, Okay. Santa Fe tends to be more like more that. More retirement. Yeah. Um, yes. Um, Placidus can be a little bit even more like that, but not so much Albuquerque. It's it's a thriving, um, thriving city. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Is, is living in an LGBTQ community important to you? And is there an LGBT community like a gayborhood in Albuquerque, or is it just all mixed? We do not have a gayborhood. Um, we have actually only even two queer bars um, to go to, but we have a thriving, and I mean thriving LGBTQIA community in Albuquerque, um, in Santa Fe, Santa Fe, and in Las Cruces. I mean, they are. And and here here's my. I go back and forth on that, right? Because it's nice to have a place. It's nice to have. Um, actually, we have three gay bars in Albuquerque. So I'll correct myself on that. Um, it's nice to have that safe space, mm-hmm. right? I agree. Um, but our culture is so assimilated here that then you lose that. You, you, you lose, pe- there, there's not a need. They keep trying to open them in Santa Fe and they close because it's not enough of a draw. Of course, their population is older there as opposed to here in Albuquerque area where um, it, it's not like that. You get much younger population. Um, so I, um, I think I got off task of answering your, <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. It's because when I went to Santa Fe and I visited Santa Fe, I asked, where's the gay bar? And they're like, oh, there isn't any. And I was yeah. like, really? Why? Yeah. And I knew there was a large gay community there and they said, well, there's really no need for it. And then I thought, okay, you- so yeah. Everyone is, you know, assimilated or integrated into the community, mm-hmm. but I still have that thing where I want a safe place to go to. Yeah. I, you know, I'm not looking to, you know, I'm married, and but I'm not looking to pick somebody up. But right. you know what? I feel more comfortable in a gay bar than I do in a straight bar. Mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. know, just yeah. like talking to people. I don't know. I get it. Yep, I, I I get it. And I think a lot of people feel that way. And maybe it's because Santa Fe is more, has an older population. Maybe that's why. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Because, I mean, the ones in the three in Albuquerque stay pretty, pretty busy for the most part. Um, we also, I do want to give 
a plug. Um, and since you, since uh, I need to go and update my bio on my website because I'm also on the board of Equality New Mexico. Oh yes, uh, yeah. Which um, Equality New Mexico is the reason why we New Mexico is now the safest state in the country for LGBTQIA people on paper. On paper, we have more protections than any other state in the United States. And you that's, do, okay. That's pretty fabulous. So yeah, a- absolutely. And you know, there's not too many blue states around mm-hmm. that, especially, have great weather, right? <laughs> so, right. And blue skies, like you do, right? Yeah. Um, we, yeah, we have almost. I th- I I didn't look up the number. Of what there's three hundred and something. Just I mean, I think we get twenty days a year of cloudy. The rest yep. of it is blue skies and sunshine. So does uh, New Mexico have like an anti-discrimination bill for we LGBTQ? Do. We do. Yeah. In fact, people are coming here in um, throngs. I'm, we, we, right now, the struggle is we're lacking enough housing because people are moving here from border states like Texas, where there's no protections and they discriminate against transgender people and they cannot get the health care that they need. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, that's, that's what we're dealing with right now is to try and solve the housing issue for people that are moving here because we have so many great protections. That's so important because even listening, oh my God, yesterday to Tennessee, Mm -hmm. they, (gasps) they challenged marriage equality Mm -hmm. and you know, that's, to me, it's kind of a scary thing. Right. You know, does New Mexico have any bills in place that would disqualify that from happening or prevent that from happening? Do, Do you know? Them, well, of course, I mean, laws can always be changed, changed. But right now it's all pretty solid and we just need to keep keep everything as it is. I mean, we're looking at something like oh, 100 and just under 140 seats within the legislature that could that are have the great potential to change next year so that's certainly a big concern we want mm-hmm. to keep them blue mm-hmm. um so that we keep all these protections in place but yeah there's um if you have a single um if you have a business with a single restroom it has to say restroom it cannot say you know you can't have labels for male and female Men. and in oh, women. Wow. Um, the um, you cannot. Um, you have to respect the kids in school if they are transgender. If they want to use different pronouns, they have all of those protections in place. I mean, the list goes on. It's really a great state. You know, I always spoke highly of New Mexico too for you know their political views and and just pretty much everything i mean the weather is beautiful um there are some things we'll discuss mm-hmm. you know that's probably not so beautiful but mm-hmm. you know every place no place is perfect right right no place is perfect okay so there's no gayborhood mm-hmm. but living at living there as an lgbtq person is perfectly fine. You think? Oh, absolutely. Perfectly fine. Perfectly safe. I mean, we have, we have so many like drag events and gay events happening around the city between Albuquerque and Santa Fe. You couldn't possibly all attend them in a week. I mean, <laughs> they're just continuing. I like to hear that. Yeah. I think there's five events going on just this weekend alone at different places. Um, so yeah, it's it's very welcoming and very very safe. I love that. I love that. Bravo. So, okay. Did they have a pride Albuquerque? I think we they do. Do. It's we do. Yes. Um it's a very it's a large pride. They moved it last year. It was originally um gosh, I think they they've been doing it for years. I want to say like 15 years or something. Um and it was down at Fair Park downtown, but now they moved 
the actual balloon, uh, they moved the actual Pride Festival to Balloon Fiesta Park. Sorry. I've um, been there. Have you? Yeah. <laughs> and, um, but the, the Pride Parade goes right down Central, super well attended. We never, rarely have any buddy out there doing anything, you know, like protesters or anything right. like that. I mean, I think I've seen one person in 10 years. Yeah, you always find that one yeah. person. Right. But, um, but yeah, it's a very, it's a large, it's a large, it takes a couple of hours for the parade to go all the way through. And, you know. Yeah, because um, Balloon Fiesta Park is pretty big. Very big. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, I was there, <clears throat> actually, the last time I was there, it was my 60th birthday. Mm -hmm. I said, you know what? This is on my bucket list. I've always wanted to see the Balloon Fiesta in yeah. New Mexico, in Albuquerque. Yeah. You know, that's just one thing I want to do. And it so happens, it it on my 60th birthday, it was on the day of my birthday. Okay. It was on October 9th. And we went out there, got up really early in the morning. I remember 5, 5.30 to get out there. Took a bus from our hotel out there, froze our asses off <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Uh, had to buy a, like a blanket to wrap ourselves around. Mm -hmm. um, it was pretty funny. <laughs> um, and that actually, that trip got me out living here in phoenix because i made a side trip after that yeah. to phoenix while i was out there uh -huh. and to a friend and we saw phoenix for the first time and that's how after a couple of times out here here i am yeah so, yeah yeah phoenix is a great city yep it mm -hmm. sure is mm -hmm. yeah okay so would you think how difficult or how easy is it to meet other LGBTQ people in the Albuquerque area? It is super, super easy. And if you find it hard, it's because you're not making any effort. <laughs> I mean, we have, we have um, friends of Dorothy that is once a quarter. We have the women's dances, which are all, all lesbian and transgender. We are all welcome um, to um, which are once a quarter. We have the Equality New Mexico events. We've got the Community Foundations events. And then, as I mentioned earlier, there are drag events happening, multiple events happening every single weekend. I mean, you, you just, you can't attend them all because right. there's just so much going on. There's so much opportunity out there. Um, we have a great, um, soccer team it's a new mexico united is a farm team and they're they embrace our they're very very lgbtqia friendly they do a pride night um and a whole one year the first year we did it we um had a conversation with them they said hey we you know like to make this a big pride night event um it ended up filling the stadium with 10,000 people Wow. Waving rainbow flags and cheering on. I mean, <laughs> it gives you the chills. <laughs> I know it's that's really great. Fantastic. That's great. So mm -hmm. you've made your your own group of friends within the community as well. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Yep. Great. Yes. That, yep. That's really important to me. Making community is is so important. Um wherever you live really? so it's just so important you know as we get older um we need those tight-knit relationships too you know amongst friends mm -hmm. that could help you or your partner you know whether you know if there's an emergency or something is needed absolutely it's so very very important mm -hmm. yes it is it is. And it's a, it, it, it gives you a, qual a different quality of life, right? You're not isolated. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Makes a big, big difference. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about the local economy. Um, do you have any idea what, like a single family home, two to, two to three bedroom, two bath would cost in the Albuquerque area, what a rental goes for? Yeah. So the average, I mean, like every place, cost of living 
is up, right? Home prices are up everywhere. Yeah. The average, the median price for a home in Albuquerque is three hundred and forty nine thousand, and rent is anywhere from thirteen hundred to eighteen fifty a month. Mm-hmm. Um, the 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 benefit though, and again, um, it depends on the county that you live in, but the property taxes here are super low. Education system is not great, so if you're raising children, that is this is a little problem. A little bit of a concern. There are some good schools here, though, um, but um, property taxes are so low. I mean, we I I don't know the exact percentage off the top of my head, but um, like for a two thousand square foot home, you're going to spend about twenty two hundred a year in property. That's taxes. really. Right. <clears throat> That's really reasonable. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there is a state income tax, but it's low. Um, I mean, utilities are, I think, very affordable. Um, de- again, depending where you are. Um, like, what's your electric bill like? Our you know? our electric bill for us personally. Um, before we added a cas- two casitas on our property and a greenhouse, it was a hundred dollars a month. Wow! At its highest. That's and great. Was, you have a two thousand square foot home. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit different now with a green heated in a, with a greenhouse <laughs> that we keep heated and greenhouse, a couple of <laughs> right, right, a couple of casitas, casitas. <laughs> so that's changed it, but um, but it's very affordable. How about grocery, groceries? Is it reasonable? Or? I think so. I don't, I don't find it any different than any place else I've ever been to. And we certainly have a plethora of farmer's markets that you can go to to buy local produce anytime you want. Um, there, other than December and January, you can catch them almost year round. Um, and some of them even in December. So. Yeah, I think cost-wise, food is pretty much on par. Reasonable. With, very reasonable, yeah. Okay. Um, how about renting? Uh, Two-bedroom, mm-hmm. oh, you said eight, yeah, 13 to 1800 to 1850 mm-hmm, on average. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty reasonable. I would say cost of living is, is do you know if it's above below the... Median for the U.S.? I am not sure. Okay. Yeah. I would think it might be. Uh, It might be. Yeah, I am not sure, Mark. I didn't. uh... That's quite all right. That's quite all right. Tell us a little bit about arts and culture. What could we, if we went to Albuquerque, Placidas, what would we find as far as arts and culture? Is there theater? Is there museums? Um, the, I think well, do, there's tons, there's again, a plethora of museums and, um, beautiful, I mean, the art and culture here is, I think, fabulous. We, we do, I think we could, um, I personally would like it if we had a couple more live theater opportunities. Um, but, um. I mean, but our population, I don't know if the population would support it or not. We're not like Dallas or Phoenix, <laughs> right? Right, right. Yeah. But, um, but in terms of other types of, I mean, art events are all the time. Um, there's more galleries than you could ever visit in a week. I know really? it's there's a lot of them in in uh, Santa Fe. Yes, and there's Are a they... lot in Albuquerque too. Yes, okay. there's a lot of a lot of galleries. Um and Old Town Albuquerque has just recently gone through a whole makeover and now there's all new um shops, restaurants, bars, galleries down there that uh, are all new in the past year, year and a half maybe. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do they have any live theater? Oh, like, yeah, there can is. I get oh, my yeah. theater fix? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's at least five oh, um, off the top five. of my head. There's at least five, yeah. Theaters? 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's a lot yeah. for a city. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, I good. I'm glad you think that. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, because um, here in Phoenix, we have the Phoenix Theater, which I could walk to, mm-hmm. and that's live theater. But it's lo- you know, it's local, but they're very professional. It's great. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's one in a neighboring town called Tempe, mm-hmm. and they do more of the off Broadway, the traveling Broadway. Yes. Okay. Um, so, mm-hmm. and those are the well, and then in the outer outskirts, the other sections like Scottsdale, they have their own, but right. But um, yeah, Phoenix proper is just like one. So if Albuquerque yeah. has like yeah. five, that's that's a lot to me. Yeah, we have Pope Joy is the biggest one. Um, they bring all kinds of big um, productions. And then there are several small ones. Black Dog Theater is one that comes to mind immediately. Um, or Black Cat, sorry, not Black Dog, Black Cat. Um, I can't think of the other ones off the top of my head, but there are several that have, you know, smaller productions, which that's my kind of favorite thing to go Do to. You- Oh, so and yeah. what do you, I was going to ask, what do you enjoy in the arts and theater and the arts and culture world? Yeah. Um, we love to go to dine in theaters and, um, we only have one of those here, uh, currently, but, um, Flick's brew house. Um, but it is great. Uh, and, um, we love to go to, um, the galleries and, there's wine tastings. You know, we have. Oh, I you like know? that. A Mexico, New Mexico is actually the oldest wine producing state in the country. Wow. Yeah, far surpassing. Older California. than California. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. What kind of wine do you grow or um, produce? Oh, that's you know? a tough question. Well, I know we have, there are two wineries that automatically, Gruet, that's produced here, and they do a, I uh, love their sparkling. They do great whites and reds. They have several different varieties. And the other one, now all of a sudden, um, um, blanking on their name, but they have a good array of, again, sparkling whites and reds. Yummy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. New Mexico sounds better and better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of partial. <laughs> yeah. So are you a foodie? Yes. Oh, gosh, yeah. And uh, uh, and again, partial to New Mexican food. It's very different, right? As you've probably experienced, uh, we love our chili here. Yes, you and, do. And, Yes, and it'll be either red green or you can go with Christmas, which is a combo of both. Both. Right? <laughs> yeah. Uh you can pretty much get chili on everything. Everything. <laughs> There's even chilies hanging from people's doors. Right, yes, yes. Reestras hanging from yep, yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we have oh gosh, so many gr- there's really so many great restaurants. There's a ton of small ones um, that are really fun, little funky places to go check out. But there are some really great restaurants. Um, really. Do you have any like five star Michelin? Oh, we do. Yeah, we do. Um, the Lavender Farm, uh, Los Poblanos, definitely. Um, you have to make a reservation, and sometimes there's a wait list before you can get in um yeah seasons in old town um level five at hotel chaco there's a bunch that are really superb i know i can't remember the one i was at um in albuquerque but it was yummy yeah it was Mm -hmm. so good yeah good good yeah and i've been to i've been to a few also in santa fe too because we have friends in santa fe okay so They kind of like took us to these other places, which were really good. But yeah. we went to a few in Albuquerque, and they were just as good, delicious, yeah. yeah, delicious food. Yeah, it's a. I mean, it's it's hard to you know. To, people think of Santa Fe, which has its own climate. It's so very different, right mm-hmm. from 
from um, Albuquerque in terms of the queer community. Um, it's and they have their own wonderful restaurants. I mean, we yeah. are, split our time between both cities back and forth all the time. Yeah, I mean, do you both. drive or is you take the? Is it the, called the Rail Runner? You could take the Rail Runner. We typically drive. See, I remember that you did. <laughs> You did, yeah. It's Which runs good. from Albuquerque to Santa Fe, and it's a beautiful train ride. Yeah, it's about an hour long, right? Yep, yep, exactly, yep. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to drive, you can just take Hop. it back and forth. Yep, yep. Does it run mostly all day, and does it stop yes. at a certain time, do you know? I think it stops at 9 o'clock at night or something like that. Might be the last one. Yeah. Okay, it'd be past my bedtime anyway. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in fact, um, Santa Fe um, Pride does a Pride train ride every year. That is absolutely fabulous, and you can get you can get the train, you board it in Santa Fe, and it goes out to Lamy, and then turns around and comes back. It's just beautiful. There's um, live music and fab fabulous cocktails on the train. On the train, yep, yep. It's oh, an isn't that that? That special train that goes yeah. around right. New Mexico. Oh yep. yeah, yeah, I've heard of yep. that. Yep, mm -hmm. that's something I want to experience too. It is lots of fun. That's going to have to be on my bucket list list the next yeah. time I go. <laughs> and there will be a next time. Good, good. Yeah, because I enjoy. I really enjoyed it. You know, it was a mm -hmm. it was a great trip, mm -hmm. and I say this all the time. I've never seen blue sky as i've seen it in albuquerque or new mexico mm -hmm. i forget maybe in other parts of new mexico I, i'm not sure mm -hmm. but i just remember looking up and saying oh my god how much bluer could it get right and it's something to do with the atmosphere the mount the, and the mountains that creates that just amazing blue skies beautiful there just beautiful. Thank there's you. Thing, there's something about New Mexico, too. Like that They call it the land of enchantment. Yep. Yes. So mm -hmm. it's something, I don't know, something enchanting. Yes. There's such a sense of peacefulness, I think. Yeah, and I was talking to somebody. It's like every time he went, it kind of drew him there. Yeah, yeah. And yet you chose Phoenix. I did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Yeah, hard call. I mean, yeah, it yeah. was. Awesome you know what? I'm a urban kind of guy. Okay. So I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. Yes. So I'm more of a like I need that quick pace city mm -hmm. environment. Even though yeah. Phoenix is nothing like New York, uh -huh. but it's still it's a huge city. It's like the mm -hmm. fifth largest city in the United States. So right. right. Yeah, you're not going to get that in New Mexico. No. No. <laughs> no. But you know what? I, I may be ready for a little bit more calm. I don't know. I'm getting older. So yeah, yeah. it's time for retirement soon. Yeah. We'll see. I'm still working. But we'll it, see. Was, it was funny when people said um, when we first moved here, they would complain about the traffic and we would laugh. We'd be like, really? Uh, what traffic? Yeah, there is absolutely no traffic. You can get from, from one side of town clear to the other in 30 minutes and never run into another bumper yeah I mean. <laughs> yeah i believe it you, you haven't seen traffic until you've experienced new york city traffic right. or yes, la yes. la dallas and phoenix is pretty phoenix traffic it's getting up there now yeah it's yeah that's why i'm i like living where i, I live in midtown phoenix okay so if i don't have to go on the highway mm. I you can don't. take the streets pretty much out of here. Phoenix is like a grid. Okay. So it's just numbers of streets and then separated by a central ave like you have. Mm -hmm. And then the west side is avenues. So, and it goes by numbers. So it's pretty okay. easy. Oh, interesting. For the yeah. most part. So tell us about um, public transportation. I know that they have some sort of um, a trolley or a light rail. There is a bus system that runs 
around town and goes up and down. There is a rail trolley that goes up and down. It's actually all um, electric, uh, solar powered that runs up and down central, which is right. the main kind of like drag, I guess you'd call it. I know they were constructing um, that when I was when I was there last. Okay. Yeah, they were but putting it all together. Yeah. But I wouldn't say it's set. It's not really set up for like good. I wouldn't say it has good public transportation. You, you need a car. You need a car. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I, I would agree. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the traffic situation, as you said, is pretty nothing. Pretty nothing. No. Yeah. Not and, compared to big cities. <laughs> yeah. How um, How close is the airport to town? Oh, my gosh. I mean, we can make it to the airport from Placidus in 25 minutes. Wow. Uh, and um, and, this, and they're revamping now. They've been working on the Sunport for the past year. I can't wait to see when it's all completely done because we traveled just a couple of weeks ago and the changes were really uh, very exciting. But um, so it's easy to get in and out of because it's a smaller airport. You it cannot... Is. There's very few places you can fly directly. Like I can fly to Dallas directly, Phoenix, Phoenix. Las Vegas. But if you want to go beyond that, you pretty much have to do Connect. a connecting flight. Um, but the airport, if you live in in actual Albuquerque, the airport's what, 15 minutes, 10 minutes? I mean, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there any public transportation to get from like town, from like downtown to the airport? Not really. No? No. You really need to have a vehicle. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have to learn from Phoenix. Phoenix has the light rail and it goes right to the airport. That's so you don't, nice. You don't have to drive and the light rail stop is right across from our condo. Oh, so wow. We just walk across the street, hop on the light rail. 20 minutes later, we're at the airport. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's, it's Do you even sweet. need to have a car? You do. You still okay. do because mm -hmm. grocery shopping. it's so big. Yeah. And grocery shopping. And plus in the summer, you don't want to be outside. Right. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, you'll fry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like yeah. a worm. Mm -hmm. Feel like a pizza. Right. In a pizza oven. <laughs> no fun. No. Right. no. Not, not at all. Hey, we, every place has its, you know, its pluses right. and minuses. Right. Yes. It depends what you're what you're going for. Right. If right. you want to live in an urban area, you want to live in a city. What kind of amenities are you looking for? That kind of thing. Right. Yeah. You know what? <clears throat> I lived in cold all my life in New York City. Right. So it was something that I didn't want to live anymore. So now yeah. I have the opposite. Right. I have heat. Right. <laughs> so it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. It's still <laughs> I can go out and not you know. I mean, it's hot, but and you wear shorts and, you know, mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it, it works. Mm -hmm. It works. Yeah. Okay. Now we get to the nitty gritty of crime and safety. Yes. Mm -hmm. So all the time I always hear, oh, Albuquerque has a crime problem. Um, and I know it's a lot of um, petty theft. It's car theft mm -hmm. stuff like that i don't mm -hmm. think it's um uh, it's like homicide murder and stuff like that i think it's more you know don't leave your car unlocked um right, right. don't leave your garage put, door wide open or right right so mm -hmm. tell us a little mm -hmm. bit about the crime um you know i think every city has crime problems and every city in the world has crime problems. There's, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't really think Albuquerque is any different from any other city of its size. Um, I mean, I we go downtown all the time and never have any issues. Um, never have had any problems. Um, you know, there's. And like you said, they're more like petty crimes than it's not like we get a lot of murders or right. anything like that. Um, you have to use common really. sense wherever you are. You do. Right. Right. You're, I mean, you lock your car. Um, you keep your garage door closed. Um, you know, otherwise you're just really kind of inviting it in. So. Right. 
How about um, gun laws? Uh, is it legal to have an open carry there? It is legal currently. Yes. It I'm is? trying to get that changed. Yeah. Oh, I'm surprised. Mm -hmm. Yep. Me too. Me too. Yep. So open carry is legal? Open carry is legal. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Here too. Yeah. It's like, you know what it is? I think it's the Wild West mentality. It is the Wild West mentality. Yes. And it's, it's crazy because we don't want to, we care more about the right to carry a gun than we do the safety of our children in schools. Nuts. It it's is nuts. Cr it's crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, this whole country, as far as that's concerned, is a little bit crazy. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. So as far as um, gun crime, there hasn't been much. I mean, you read about things now and then in the paper, but statistics wise, no, it's not a big deal. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's to me, I think they pick on Albuquerque and New Mexico a little bit as far as you know, crime statistics go, because I don't think it's much more of a bigger deal than any other place. Correct. Correct. I, I, I should have looked that up um, because n now I will <laughs> to see how we compare to um, other cities. But actually, you know what I did? I did pull this up. Um, like we are, if you go to the top cities in the country, Albuquerque is number six. And Memphis, St. Louis, Little Rock, Arkansas, which surprised me. Um, Baton Rouge and Oakland, California all beat us. What was those statistics for uh, best in the country for... Uh, the rate of crime, the most dangerous city in oh, okay. America, uh huh, is Memphis. And Albuquerque made the list. Albuquerque made the list at number six. Wow. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting because, uh, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I, mean, I don't here, know how they. You know what? These lists up. too. Right. I can I can laugh at some of these lists too because I don't know where they get their information from and how many people they've polled and stuff like that. Well, exactly. Right. It's like statistics. Where did they, what was their audience that right. they, yeah. Where's the data coming from? Right. Yes. Yeah. That's so, the key. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> so if I take my doggy out at two in the morning, cause he has to go to the bathroom, mm -hmm. how, will I feel okay? I think so. You might have coyotes watching you, but. Oh yeah. That's another thing. <laughs> <laughs> Phoenix. <laughs> no, we don't have that. No, no. Oh. they don't come into the city. Oh no. Okay. Yeah. No, okay. Usually not. I've okay. never seen one. Okay. Yeah, we. Yeah. We don't, even, I mean, we, don't, so. we don't even get that many scorpions. Oh wow. Yeah, we, I, we don't have many. We have in Placidus. We have in Albuquerque. You don't have that much. Um, out where we are. Yeah, you rural, more so. mountainous and right. Yes, yeah. So we see coyotes all the time. And yeah, not me. If I saw one, I was like, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> nope. Bar the door. <laughs> I'm a city boy from Brooklyn. The most I used to see was squirrel. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Pigeon and squirrel. <laughs> Anything above that? Uh, uh. Yeah. No thanks. That's, that's funny. <laughs> when I used to live in Florida, when I moved to Florida, mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh, my God, snakes. And we had a house, and there was snakes crawling out in the patio. And I'm like, uh -uh. And the husband's screaming, get it out of here, get it out of here. And I'm <laughs> taking a broom and <laughs> sweeping it <Right>. out. <laughs> oh, and uh, spiders, Florida. Oh, yeah, a lot. Florida has a lot of spiders, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they not here in Phoenix. I think it's too hot for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's not muggy here, so it's so dry. Right. That, mm -hmm. Thank God I was, I used to be a mosquito magnet in mm -hmm. Florida here. Mm -hmm. Hardly any. Yeah. 
Yep. We now that's one thing we don't have either. Um, if you if you are live what they call in the Bosque, which is along the river, mm-hmm. then you're going to have mosquitoes, mosquitoes. and um, more more you know insects. Right. But other than that, we're we don't really we don't have mosquitoes are almost non-existent no, yeah we don't have to put flea treatment on the dogs that's my uh, type of place. yeah yeah mm-hmm. we still do we ha- we have to put um frontline for ticks on the, on our dogs okay wow ticks Even are the- still here yeah in yeah. fact my lab got a tick here oh, wow and yeah we were just like hanging out at starbucks and i was like oh what's this thing and it was a tick. Yeah, they come in on the wind, I guess, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Now, we've been very fortunate where we are in Placidus. We've never had an issue with that. I know in some, you go up by Taos and you definitely, yeah, it's different, um, but not, not where we are. Excellent. So um, is there a homeless population? There is. Mm-hmm. Yep. There is, again, like every city's got them um it's um and they're trying to get control of it they're putting in housing to try and support um the homeless population but there's no easy fix there's no band-aid that you can put on it yeah there's no easy fix any anywhere yeah Mm -mm. so it's a it's a problem in a lot of places in most places others more than more so than you know others but mm-hmm. I know we do have a problem here in Phoenix. I think everybody does. I, I we re- recently went to Mesa, Arizona, to oh, yeah, that's near. see because um, the Pink concert was in Phoenix. Okay, back in September, and we went with a group of women, rented a house, and loved that loved that area. Um, we were like, wow, we didn't see any homeless people on the street. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, it was shocking. So I don't know if it was just where you are, where we were, it's possible where you were, you know, they're mostly downtown Phoenix. Okay. They're unfortunately along the light rail because they sneak onto the light rail Mm -hmm. because it's not, there's no police presence all the time it's people get on the light rail the security to collect tickets randomly at different stops so oh so it's easy they get on and then they get chased off and then they get arrested or oh wow so most of them do hang out around the light rail unfortunately Mm, interesting yeah and i do i mean you you get i think the the homeless populations in most cities tend to be in the downtown mm-hmm. areas right? I'm, right i'm not sure why that is but yeah it mm-hmm. and i would think they would be more prevalent in a nicer climate like where i mean um new mexico has pretty nice climate here mm-hmm. they could die frying in the summer you know yeah. it's so hot right. i mean 120 degrees if you're not indoors yeah. in air conditioning and you're just yeah. laying out there it's horrible Ooh, i can't even imagine yeah yeah, yeah no, I can't so even imagine. it's a, it's a big problem and hopefully the government will try to do something i know they try but i don't know how successful they actually are what yeah i think it's going to be years before we are able to have solutions to the homeless problem. And and again, the cost of housing is so expensive. I mean, and it keeps on going up. So how is somebody, right. right, People lose their jobs. What do they do? They live out of their cars. Right. Yeah. 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 It's just, it's a tough time. It's a tough time in our country right now, I think, for yeah. everybody for it that sure is. is living on the edge like that. Yeah. Yeah, you I know? think about it too and I'm like, you know, we're we're so fortunate that we you know, could afford, you know, luxuries like a home. 
you right. know, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Right. where there are others, you know, people lose their job and so on and so forth. And they're not mm-hmm. as fortunate. So mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, it's, it's a big problem. Yeah. And I, I'm, again, they are trying to find solutions, but I think it just, it goes back and forth all the time. It's like a bandaid. You know? Yeah. It's like a bandaid. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Pam, tell mm-hmm. us about healthcare. How about the healthcare system? Are there enough doctors um, to support the population? Do you go to specialists? Is it long waits? Uh, We have never had um, that long of a wait to get into a specialist. Um, We do have, I think we do have uh, great health care here. It's, it's, um, we have Presbyterian uh, and it's a UMN. Christ, Saint uh, Vincent um, are our two, and Loveless. So three major hospitals um, that are here, and like Presbyterian has little satellite centers all over the place. Um, I mean, there's one like every seems feels like every couple of miles. There's um, you run into a Presbyterian urgent care center where they have, you know, doctors and labs and stuff on site right there. Um, well, oh. I've never, I know my wife recently had to go into an ENT and she had to wait. Uh, she was going to have to wait two months to get an, an appointment. And so she called her doctor back and her doctor got her into somebody else within a week. So it's really not been an issue for us. Not a problem. Mm-mm. Okay. No. Mm-hmm. That that's good. And mm-hmm. how far is the hospitals to you? Um, gosh, there's three of them all within thirty minutes. Okay. Yeah. So mm-hmm. my rule of thumb is as long as there's something within thirty to forty five minutes. Right. Right. Yes. Which means you're getting older. You right. You want to. That's that's an important consideration. Yeah. 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 I know. Um, we um, we love going to Taos, but we were like, oh, I wonder what it would be like to live in Taos. And then then we started thinking, well, wait a minute. There's really you'd have to no you'd have to a hospitals an hour away. Um, oh no. Home Depot's an hour away. Oh, forget it. We couldn't do it. <laughs> Nope. No. Nope. Nope. There's some places I've I've interviewed people and um I asked how far is the hospital and they go, Well, that's a problem because oh. it takes an hour and fifteen minutes at least to get out uh to the nearest oh, hospital. Oh gosh. So they yeah. either have to fly you out or Yeah, that's wow. not Yeah. It's yeah, not, no. not a not a place. So I, that's mm-hmm. generally I like when I'm looking for, you know, a place, let's say I'm looking for a place to live or retire. Mm-hmm. Number one is the hospitals. How close are the hospitals? Mm-hmm. How close is the airport? Right. Mm-hmm. You know, where's the airport? Where do the, you know, flights go to? Right. Um, and mm-hmm. how big is the LGBTQ community? and Right. Good climate. Those yep. are the most important yep. things to me. Mm-hmm. So, I think okay. we, hit, we, 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 we hit that checkoff list. <laughs> yeah. As, you in terms off of, yeah. In terms all of, all of that you know, stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So, okay. So do you wish you had something in Albuquerque that you might've had elsewhere that you don't have in Albuquerque? Like a good bagel and cream cheese. No, that's what I'm thinking of in New York. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't, I'm not sure we actually, I don't think that we have a deli per se here. I, I don't think that we do. Um, and if we do, and I am not aware of it, then shame on me because I need to check you it should out. Start, you should open up one. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. I already do enough. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah I went to um, Palm Springs and I, I fell in love with the place because there's a place called Sherman's Deli. I don't know if you've uh -huh. been. Uh -oh, and no. it reminds me so much of New York. I feel like I'm home when I'm oh, there. It's just like awesome. a New York deli. And it's yeah. huge. Yeah. Oh, my God. And, and the food is so good. So, oh, yeah. Those are gems. Those, yes, they are. Yes. So, yeah, those are real gems. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. The only thing, I mean, if, if um, my personally, Personally, my thing, I love to go to modern dance performances. And that's the one thing that I miss um, not living in Dallas, because Dallas, okay. you had that all the time. And here, we might get to a year. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's a trade off. We don't have the heat, the traffic. Right. Or the yeah. politics. <laughs> right. You'll take it. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. You'll suffer. <laughs> I'll suffer. That's right. I'll suffer. That's what I say. I'll suffer. Oh, I suffer so. <laughs> That's what my oh, husband tells me. York. Oh, you oh, suffer yeah, so. <laughs> Poor thing. All yeah. right. So living there for so many years, over ten yeah. years, what would you say? What would you say were the cons? Any cons? Yeah, I can't really. Lack of late water, maybe, you know, water is certainly, as we know, a, a concern in the West. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's generally in the West all, all over. I mean, we have certainly lakes here, um, um, not as many as they do up north. Um, but, I mean, I, I really can't. Think of a con, honestly. That's a good thing. Yeah. That's yeah. a good thing. That means you love it where you live. So We do. We do. We absolutely love it here. The community, the, the queer community is just outstanding. Just really couldn't, couldn't be better. That's great. I love hearing that. Mm -hmm. I love putting my own community together. Right. Yeah. And I've been... I've been doing yeah. that and yeah. kind of successful in, in doing that and bringing people together. Yeah. So. It, it can take a while, especially when you're yeah. older, you move into an area, then how do you, how do you connect with people? Right. Um, so yeah, it can, it can be a challenge, but um, there are certainly, I mean, sources you can go to in most cities, not all, mm -hmm. but and we certainly have a bunch of them here that you can easily connect within to the community quite easily. Yep. That's important. It's important mm -hmm. that you have yeah. all that stuff too. Yeah. Yeah, it is. So Pam, in wrapping up, what would you say to the audience if they're thinking about relocating and retiring in Albuquerque? Oh, I would say if you're looking to be, um, to live in a place that has an ideal climate because it's rarely too hot or too cold for any length of time. Um, and that's reasonably affordable, I think, still compared to housing costs, we are not what you're going to pay on the coast lines. Right. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, and, um, and the community is very welcoming. And again, we are the safest state for the LGBTQIA community. So I would say you would love it here. Just come visit. And you're nice and blue. Not only the sky, the sky is blue that. and everything else around it is blue. Everything else, right, exactly. <laughs> and there are rainbows. <laughs> and there are rainbows. Oh, my gosh, yeah, we do get a lot of rainbows here. Do you get rainbows and a lot of rainbows in Phoenix? We do. We do, do? get some. Yeah. yeah. I think it's the best thing. It it doesn't rain often, but, and, you know, usually after a rain, we get them. Um, yeah. But when it does, they're, yeah, my friends take pictures from the balcony yeah. of beautiful mm -hmm. rainbows. So, yeah. And though, even though uh, we may not get a tremendous amount of rain where we are, the mountains will get the rain. 
And so yeah. you can still see the rainbows because, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. They're just, yeah. Yeah, That's because beautiful. the mountains are going to get the moisture. Beautiful. Yeah. All right, Pam. <laughs> well, thank you so much for Mark, coming. And yeah. And um, could we find you on social media anywhere? Um, you can. You can find me at pammyers.com or at pammyerssocialmedia.com. You can find me on pretty much any social channel under Pam Myers, and it's P-A-M-M-M-E-Y-E-R-S. So, yep, I'm, I'm pr- pretty out there. <laughs> and <laughs> I've sus- noticed, I think it's a trademark of you, but when you r- sign your name or write your name or print your name, it's all in lowercase. Is there a reason? Yeah, that? I just, I don't know. I, I added the second M and, um, and went to all lowercase uh, for artistic reasons. I, mean, I think years it's artistic. Ago. I was going to say, I, th- I, I really like it. Thank you. I was you. like, you know what? I'm going to remember her <laughs> because it's Pam with two M's and it's lowercase. Yeah. Cool. Great. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been real special. And thank you so much for coming and taking the time to talk to us and the audience about Albuquerque and Placidas. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Mark. It's been an honor. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. And we'll talk soon. Okay. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye.